Hi there, it's Dave. It's about uh, 2.30 in the morning. It's uh, March the, or rather April the 8th, 2018. Um, just can't sleep and came downstairs for a cigarette actually and to tape this. Um, my chest is a little bit better. I have shortness of breath, which does bother me, uh, where I have to stop and it really just, I cannot breathe. Uh, but overall, I, can, I think my chest is getting better. I've been on the antibiotics in the present zone for a couple of days, and I've been trying to sleep and trying to eat. So um, I'm doing what I can. Um, I find this part, I found the last, since I came to Vancouver, it's been extremely difficult, if not the worst part of this whole experience. Um, I have made a decision that I would like to meet my sister as soon as possible and I would like to spend a bit of time with her and other than that I am going to probably go into a life of sequester. I have no interest in meeting with a lot of people and engaging with people in any element of government or law enforcement or judiciary. I have sacrificed so much that I don't think that it's appropriate for anyone to ask me to do anything more at this point to support them. I have had a very, very difficult time. I don't know why this film has suddenly decided to go like this, but the Illuminati control everything and I guess they just don't want me to be in focus. So you just got to roll with these things. Um, I have been uh, completely ignored for, as you know, uh, 18 months now, and it's been a horrendous, painful experience. Um, there has been no effort of support. There has been minimal protection, if any at all. Remember, I've been assaulted 10 times in the last year. I have been starved. I've had my clothes stolen, so I don't know where the protection is coming from. Um, what's really disappointing is that um, I know that Money was paid, 25000 I believe, was paid by George Soros or someone for him, was paid to the American government for the privilege of torturing me. More specifically, uh, doing what they just did this past winter, which has forced me to live on the street all winter long with no support of any kind. They tried that several winters and never got away with it, but this one they made sure they did. And everyone in government and law enforcement Agreed. Yes, George Soros, you have a lot of money. You have a lot of power. You deserve the right to buy someone's slavery and drive them onto the street. It's a really sad thing that someone is able to do that and no one will protect you. As, as this past winter showed, no one was there for me to protect me or stand up for me. Whatever money or power had, someone had, that's what did the talking. I don't have power and I don't have money. So my voice was completely ignored. That's really ugly to see and no one wants to admit it, but that's why I sat and slept on the street every single night this winter and nobody did anything. The other thing is, um, it's been just, I know that uh, my life is devalued. There was a discount put on my life that Justin Trudeau's life or someone else's life was certainly much more valuable than mine to protect either you know physically or from the court system or from anything any improprieties they were powerful and they have money so they could buy justice and they could buy their freedom i didn't even though i was completely innocent of anything that didn't matter just throw me away in this cowhole concentration camp because I wasn't important enough. My life, someone made a decision ultimately that my life was not as valuable as Justin Trudeau's or someone else with power. And we all know that that's how the world works, unfortunately, but it's really ugly and sad when you're on the opposite end and you're the one suffering just because someone rich and powerful wants to have a freedom or get away with something that they shouldn't have done. Um, we like to think that Canada is better than that, but obviously it isn't. Uh, it's fallen so bad that if you don't have money or power, then you will be thrown in prison or murdered if you say anything remotely that's not in line with what is supposed to be said by the rich and powerful in this country. It's really sad to see 
It's gone on for so long now, it's impossible to ignore. It's impossible to gloss over this. It's impossible to pretend it didn't happen. I don't really want to engage with a lot of people because I don't frankly trust any of you. This whole week went by, I had to fight to, uh, to get some medicine and to deal with my sickness and at the same time be stalked relentlessly and starved and not a single help was coming. This has been the case every single week in here. I'm used to the fact that Canada never comes through for me ever. I can never rely on Canada. If something is really, really bad, if I don't fix it myself, it'll never get fixed. And if I don't address it, it'll never get addressed. There are so many things that have fallen by the wayside. I have a broken jaw from November 22nd when I was violently assaulted on the street. I can't get anyone to fix it. I can't get my leg fixed. Um, it's just irrelevant. Uh, no one has done any investigation about who assaulted me on the street. I've been assaulted 10 times in the last 14, 15 months. Not one single thing has been done. The message that Canada has consistently sent me is, you are worthless to us. We are not going to do anything to help you. We're not going to give you any support whatsoever. And it got to the point one one day in January of last year, actually January of 2017, I woke up, I was sleeping in the parking lot of the Bullfrog branch of the Guelph Library. And it was around 2.30 2 in the morning, I woke up and then it started snowing and I was covered in snow, just this thin layer. But there was snow all over my face and all over my body. And I woke up and I looked around and I realized I'm completely on my own. Canada is never going to help me. If I expect anyone to help me, I'm going to be screwed. Don't have that expectation. Face the reality, if you don't do something and get yourself out of this situation or stay alive, you could be dead. And unfortunately, every, every time I needed something or was desperately praying, someone please help me, I knew don't rely on Canada. Just expect the worst case scenario because that's what you'll get. And that's what I always get. Um, another week has gone by. I told everyone that I'm being chased by helicopters. I've been starved. I've been frozen. I put out videos showing that I have no coat and no shoes and it's freezing cold and I get a bronchial infection and still nothing is done. Not one single thing. It's frustrating. I, the only way I can deal with it is I, I don't trust anyone uh, who is supposed to be trustworthy in our society. I trust some individual people, of course, but the institutions in Canada and America, for, frankly, are just garbage. Uh, they're just, they haven't earned the trust and they don't deserve it. And I now see that some people had power and money and they got to be free and taken care of and I didn't. And it's really harsh, especially after what I did have done for this country and I did it willingly and I don't begrudge the Canadian individual but I do begrudge the country. This country has shot on me and not shown the slightest bit of respect or gratitude and it wouldn't be so bad if they just didn't show any gratitude or respect it's just they watch you starve to death and freeze to death and not have any medical attention like the neglect that I have faced from Canada is so severe that if I really thought about it, I probably would su commit suicide because it basically is a whole nation telling you that you're not worth a loaf of bread. You're not worth a warm bed. You're not worth any clothing. It's been horrible. To put it in perspective, you know, if you think about it, it's a Canadian winter, which are, they're tough. To make someone sleep outside all winter long, you have to be really cruel and mean. And when you think about it, if you have a dog, would you have left your dog outside every single night this winter without any food or without any warmth or blankets? Just left the dog outside in the snow every single night from Christmas Eve to Easter. No, of course, we would never do that. We, that would be horrible. You know, the, the cute little doggy, how could you possibly let this cute little doggy sleep outside all winter long without any clothing or blankets or anything? You know, it's a, it's a cute little doggy. Don't be so barbaric. And 
the nation would be an outrage and the SPCA would be called and the, the owners would be thrown in jail and charged. But you know, the funny thing is, you all let me do that. You all let me sleep outside every single night this winter with no clothing and no food. And still to this day, nothing is done. That's why I would like to be with my sister. I'd like to meet her and I'd like to go into seclusion and I will decide what and in any form at all, my engagement with the world continues after that. I do not expect anyone to come to me asking me for legal support or witness testimony or any kind of um, anything that would force me to relive the hellish memories that I have had to live for the last 18 months. I hope that no one would come forward expecting me to do that for their benefit, especially when I still to this very day uh, have no clothes and I have some money and I'm able to get some food but it's tight and I already have, well, by the end of the month, I'll be sleeping on the street again. I've been paying for a hostel for the last couple of days, which has been nice, especially being sick. But um, I find that uh, I can't think about it. I have to turn to Jesus quickly and ask him to take care of me and console me because the hatred and neglect of me by Canada has been so horrifically cruel and mean. Like I said, if I really thought about it, if I didn't turn to Jesus and I thought about how badly I have been treated, it might get me really, really down. And so I pray every day and I hope to get out of here and see Kelly and I hope to get my freedom back and some sort of dignity. Um, I have dignity, I have it in myself, but it would be nice to have a free day. It would be nice to not be stalked and starved and punched and kicked and everything else that I have to go through every single day. I will never forgive this country for what it did to me and how it neglected me and ignored me and blatantly just shrug me off. Canada, the nation of my birth, continues to turn its back on me during my darkest hours.